Hey, the man says, they be born again, Montrose. I swear, the answer lies. You like a copy of God's written word. It's offered to you quite freely. Uh, Gospel of John. Here I hold my hand freely offered to you. No cost, no obligation to you. Uh, the word of God written. You like a copy of God's word, you come and ask for one. Gladly place it to your hands. You got uh, a question that you would like to answer. Don't have the answers to all your questions, but uh, I do have the answer to the most important question, and that is how does a man, how does a woman get saved? How does a person get right with God? And then, of course, if you've got uh, trouble for whatever reason, disturbed, downcast, you like somebody to pray for you, then I would be more than happy uh, to do that for you also. But if you'd like to have a copy of God's Word, do feel free to come and ask for one. I left the town of Montrose 62 years ago, approximately. This is the first time that I've been back since then. I left Montrose 62 years ago as an unregenerate young man, wild, foolish, drunken, and on the pathway to destruction, but since then, within that 62 years, Montrose, I have been born again. Not something that I accomplished, not because of something in me, not because uh, I, I happen to be of a religious bent. No, far, far from it. I was without God in this world without the life of God in me and without hope in this world and I left Montrose 62 years ago but since then by the operations of God by his grace and through faith in the Son of God he has brought me to a knowledge of himself and so I return to you today after those 62 years to testify to you of the grace of God, the grace of God that would change and transform you. Maybe perhaps you like I was those 62 years ago, maybe perhaps you're godless, maybe perhaps you're without the life of God in you, without hope in this world, without hope in the face of the certainty of death and the inevitability of God's judgment. This, I tell you, is my defense. This is my apologetic that I have hope, the hope that is in me by the grace of God through faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I have hope. I have hope in the face of the certainty of death because it's coming to us all. No matter who you are, no matter what you are, no matter how famous, no matter how rich you are, no matter what you've got, no matter who you are, death is following you, death is trolling you. Every step of the way, it spoils. It interferes in everything that you do. Maybe perhaps today you're a worshiper of the idol of the free self. Free self, you know, free to be what you want, free to call yourself what you want, free to identify yourself as a cat, a man, free to, 
free to identify yourself as a woman and vice versa. The idol, the modern idol of the free self, free to be whatever you want. But the only problem with that is you can't get rid of the notion of an angry God. You can't get rid you can't get rid of the of the fact that death is trolling you. It is appointed unto man once to die, but that's not the end of it. Oh, oh how you wish, eh? You idolaters, you who worship the idol of free self, you who say you're free to live without God, you're free to deny the existence of God, you're free to do what you please. If only, if only you could convince yourself that death brings closure, but it doesn't. It doesn't. It's appointed unto man once to die, but after that, then comes the judgment. So you can't, you can't be free. You can't be free in sin. You can't be free in your godless state and condition. You can't be free in your idolatry. You're not free at all. Only in Christ, only in Jesus, only in my gospel can you be set free. No, you're not free. You've got no clue. You can't, you can't, no matter how much you try, you can't convince yourself that death will bring closure. You can't get rid no matter how much you try, call yourself an atheist, seek to convince yourself that you're an atheist, but you still, still can't get free of the notion of an angry deity who's waiting for you when you close your eyes in death. So I bid you this afternoon, I bid you to seek for the grace the grace that changed me, the grace that brought salvation and freedom to me, the grace, the grace through faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, that liberated me, that set me free. I return to you today, Montrose, 62 years on, I return to you no longer godless, no longer without hope in this world, no longer without hope for eternity, for the world to come. It is appointed unto man, divinely appointed, marked on God's calendar, the day that you'll breathe your last and then stand before God in judgment. It is appointed unto man once to die, after that then comes the judgment. Get right with God. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. God now commanded all men everywhere to repent. Turn from their sin. Turn ye, turn ye, turn ye, saith the Lord. Why will ye die in your sins? Perish for all eternity when there is life eternal life, everlasting life to be found in Jesus. Whosoever believeth shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear the word of God today, Montrose. Hear the word of God. Stop, listen, hearken to the voice of God speaking to you in the gospel. I come to you as his ambassador, not bringing to you my own opinion, my own knowledge, not bringing to you that which I think. My friends, I come to you as God's ambassador, as God's servant. I bring to you the only authority I've got is to bring the word of God to you. No other word, not the word of man, not the philosophies of men, not science or scientism, but I bring to you the Word of God. That's the only authority that I have to bring God's Word to you. 
His word is a saving word. His word is a transforming word. His word is a redeeming word. His word is a word that brings hope. Hope in this world of wickedness, of evil, of violence, of uncleanness. It's a word that will cleanse you. It's a word that will bring hope to you. It's a word that will save you. That is if you take heed to it. That is if you believe it with all your heart. So listen, hear the word of God today, Montrose, brought to you, brought to you in God's grace. By God's grace, his servants are here amongst you this afternoon, bringing the word of God to you. That's a privilege. Not everybody, not every man, woman, and child born into this world gets to hear the word of God, the gospel of his salvation. There are many people, many people in Scotland today who never get to hear the gospel, who are born to live and die, never hearing the gospel. Amazing, astonishing, is it not? Scotland, the nation that Scotland, the nation that God came to in his covenant of grace and established, formed and established this covenant with Scotland as a nation. And now all these years on, and now you've got young people shaking your head won't change the truth, man. And that, that will just bring more damnation to you. Carry on. Provoke God to more wrath and more anger. You're already under his wrath. Is it not astonishing, friends? Scotland, the land of the covenant, huh? and now all these years on, and you've got men, women, and children amongst you that have never heard the gospel. My colleague spoke to a young boy just a short while ago, speaking to him of the things of Christ, the gospel, and he was absolutely and utterly clueless, like he was listening to something from another planet. That's Scotland. That's the land of the covenant. Huh? You've gone back, Scotland. You've turned back. You've apostatized. You've turned your back upon God, upon his covenant, upon his grace, and woe is unto you, Scotland. Woe is unto you. I call upon you today. I command you today on behalf of Jesus Christ. Be reconciled to God. I command you today. Repent ye and believe the gospel. For the kingdom of God is at hand. Except ye repent. Ye shall all likewise perish god now commanded all men everywhere to repent what of god for you here today taken from the book of psalms montrose hear the word of god he says god has spoken in his holiness i will rejoice i will divide Give us help from trouble, for vain is the help of man. God has spoken in his holiness. That's why we call the Bible the Holy Bible, because it comes to you from a holy God, the thrice holy God, the God who is of purer eyes than to behold evil, the God who sees your very best efforts, as filthy rags in his sight, untouchable, unclean. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. God hath spoken in his holiness. He has given to you his holy word. His speech has gone out into all the world and into all the earth. 
and his speech is to be heard, is to be heard by you, that you're stone deaf, that you can't hear the voice of God, that's your, that's your affair, that's your problem. Jesus says, my sheep, they hear my voice, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life. But he says, he says, the goats, the goats, they can't hear his voice because they're stone deaf. But who made them deaf? Who gave them that deafness? They gave it to themselves. They're deaf because of sin. They're stone deaf because of sin. That's what sin does to men and women. It deafens them to the voice of God so that they can no longer hear his voice, hear his call. Many are called, but few are chosen, few are accepted, few are approved of. Many are called, many hear the voice of his servant, many hear the voice of a man, many hear the voice of a preacher, but they don't hear the voice of God calling them through the preacher. They don't hear the voice of the Savior calling them apart, calling them away from their sin and their rebellion, calling them, calling them to himself. They're stone deaf to the voice of God, but God has spoken. His word has gone out into all the earth, all its four corners. There's not a man, there's not a woman, a child born into this world who is not accountable, responsible for their sin and for their deafness, for their inability to hear the voice of God. No, accountable to a man, to a woman, to a child, every single one of you. All of sin and come short of the glory of God. None righteous as God. No, not one, not a single one. Unrighteous, ungodly, and unholy. One way back to God from the dark path of sin. One alone who can heal your deafness. The one who walked the face of this earth. Who gave eyesight to the blind and gave hearing to the deaf so that they could hear not the voice of a man but the voice of the Son of God. And hearing, hearing they believed, hearing they were saved, believing they were saved, Jesus Christ, the only one who can re repair your deafness and stop your ears and cause you to hear the voice of the Son of God calling you out of your sin and calling you into his salvation. You hear the voice of God all of creation, everything that has been made, that God has made, He made by His own voice. He spoke it into being. No, it is not, it is not the product of happenstance. It is not the product of an accident. It is not the product of an explosion of a bang. No. It was created by the voice of God, by the power of His voice. His voice has gone out into all the earth. Not a man, not a woman, not a child born into this world who does not know that God is. Because of all the things that He has made, you are without excuse. No such a thing as an atheist on planet earth they do not exist. Do not call yourself an atheist. Call yourself a denier. Call yourself a liar. But an atheist you are not. You know that God is. You're a morally accountable creature. And I know that how. Because like all other men, you have a conscience within you that tells you when you do right and when you do wrong. That conscience is God's agent within you, warning you, warning you. 
that you are indeed a morally accountable creature and one day you'll stand before God in that day when you breathe your last, close your eyes in death, open them to behold the judge of all the earth. And if your hearing has not been healed, restored, if you have not heard the voice of the Savior calling you to repent and believe the gospel, in that day you will be cast into eternal, everlasting flames, the fires of hell. And so I bid you this afternoon, Montrose, repent ye and believe the gospel while you may. Can you, can you keep it down a bit? But down. We're trying to work. We're trying to get repent ye and, and believe the gospel, for the kingdom of God is at hand. My friends, now is the time. Now is the time, says God, not tomorrow, not next year, not in your old age, your imaginary old age, but now. Now is the accepted time, says God, the only time that you've got. You haven't even got tonight, tomorrow. Never mind your old age. So now, says God, now is the time the time to repent, the time to turn, the time to turn back to God in the way of repentance and faith towards the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, that you might be reconciled to your Maker, be ye reconciled to God in the way of repentance and faith towards the Son of God. God's voice is to be heard in all the providence of God, in everything that falls out to you and falls out in this world. Acts of judgment, acts of salvation, in everything, in the creatures, great and small, in the storm, in the tempest, in the raging sea, every providence of god nothing nothing happens by chance in this world war pestilence disease doesn't matter what it is it's the voice of god maybe there's a providence in your life in your existence today and god is speaking to you maybe perhaps bereavement Maybe perhaps illness, sickness, disease. Maybe perhaps an accident as you call it. Some trouble that's come upon you. A family problem. The voice of God speaking to you. His voice is to be heard in all the earth. In every providence that he brings upon this earth. The man might hear his voice, obey his voice, obey his command to repent and believe the gospel, believe and trust and confide in his son Jesus Christ, in him alone is found salvation. Every act of judgment from the beginning of the world to the end, in Noah's day, the ancient world, because of their violence, because of their wickedness, because of their evil hearts of unbelief, God rained down water from heaven and brought waters up from the deep and flooded the entire earth and destroyed all humanity apart from eight souls. Acts of judgment brought upon the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah for their uncleanness, for their sodomite behavior, homosexuality, for such filth and uncleanness. God was not pleased. God was abominated by their filthy practices and rained down fire and brimstone upon them and destroyed the cities of Sodom. It's a wonder to me, in his astonishment to me 
that God does not rain down the same upon Scotland today for the same filth and uncleanness. God of mercy on you, Scotland. God of mercy on you, Montrose. Turn you around. Do that for you. What you can't do for yourself, by your grace, turn you around, by his grace, turn you around, turn you towards his son, Jesus Christ, that in him that you might find salvation through faith in the Son of God, who loved sinners and gave himself for them, and who today calls you, Repent ye and believe the gospel, he says, for the kingdom of God is at hand, and that's the only road you can enter God's kingdom. But then God's voice is to be heard in redemption and salvation. Lest you hear the voice of God, how shall they hear, the apostle says, without a preacher? Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But in order to hear, in order to hear the voice of God, well, he must first make you alive. You must be born again, Jesus says. And the Bible records it, and I believe it. You must be born again, except the man be born again, he cannot see, perceive, understand the kingdom of God. God must come to you and put his life into your soul, shed his love abroad in your heart, make you alive, raise you from your deadness and trespasses and sins. Only then will you hear the voice of the Savior. Only then will you be able to respond. How, I ask you, how can you expect a response from people who are dead? Go to your local cemetery. Go around the graves. Call out to them. Lift your voices. Shout aloud. Tell them, rise up, rise up from your graves. I guarantee you, you'll get no response at all. Somebody, somebody must resurrect them. Somebody must put life back into them. Somebody must raise them up. Then you'll get a response from them. I don't get a response from you, why? Because you're dead. Dead, 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 Montrose. Not a little bit dead, not a big bit dead totally dead to God, alienated from the life of God and without hope in this world and in the world to come. Unless God, in His grace, breathes life into your soul, only then will you be able to respond to the gospel and repent and believe it. Oh, go home, I tell you. Go home, shut your doors. Get on your knees and cry out to God. Ask Him for grace. Ask Him to make you alive, to raise you from the dead, your deadness and trespasses and sins, to give you life, to give you salvation. I tell you, I tell you, my trolls, way to show you your sin. And not all of it by any means. But were he to show you, reveal to you the sinfulness of your sin, I tell you, just one sin. I tell you, you would swim shark-infested waters to get to Jesus Christ because only he can save you from it. You need Christ. You need my Savior. You need my Jesus more than you need to breathe. Only then, in Christ, only then, when God puts grace into you, faith into you, repentance into you, He must give you everything that's necessary. You can't do it yourself. You're helpless, hopeless, impotent, benign, powerless. Only God can save you. 
I can only tell you. I can only tell you. I can tell you the story. I can tell you about Calvary. I can tell you about Golgotha. I can tell you about the suffering of the Son of God. I can tell you about his bleeding and dying. I can tell you of the love of Christ. But God, God must supernaturalize it. God must make it real to you. And only God can do that. I can't. I'm just a man. I'm just a preacher. I'm just a servant. I'm just an ambassador sent to tell you these things in the hope and prayer that God will give you ears to hear, will give you hearts, hearts to believe, and give you wills to obey. Obey what? Obey the commandment of God. What is the commandment of God? Repent ye and believe the gospel. For the kingdom of God is at hand. And that's the only way you can enter God's kingdom. But I tell you, when God speaks, oh, his voice, his voice is resistless. You go to the graveyard, speak to the graves, no response. But I tell you, when God speaks, oh, when my Savior speaks, his voice, I tell you, he can make the whole earth tremble. He can make the tournament trolls tremble. He can make you tremble. And I would that he would. But I tell you, when he speaks, oh, when he speaks, you'll come. When he speaks, you'll repent. When he speaks, you'll live. When he speaks, you'll come out of your grave. When he speaks, then you'll believe. But he must speak. He must speak. His voice is powerful. His voice created the universe, the world. His voice raises the dead even today. My gospel is his power unto salvation. Not for everyone. Not for everyone who's religious. For everyone that believeth. Everyone that believeth. Those who hear his voice and come out of their graves and live and live forever. He gives to them eternal life and they shall never perish, never to die again. That's the voice of God. That's the power of God unto salvation. But it's the power to save. It's the power of His grace. It's the outworking. It's the outworking of those words that you've heard so many times before. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He gives everlasting life to believers. He gives them the hope of life. I have come, says Jesus, that they might have life and have it more abundantly. You got that life in you, my chose? If not, why not? Why haven't you got that abundant life in you? One reason, one only. Your evil heart of unbelief, that's all. Because you won't believe. Jesus says, you will not come to me that you might have life. There's life enough for the whole of Matros in Jesus Christ. If Matros would come to him. There's enough life in Jesus Christ for the entirety of Scotland. If Scotland would come to him for life. The problem's not in my Jesus. The problem's not in God. The problem's in you. Ye will not come to me. Stubborn rebellion. No, I won't come, you say. So you don't get the life. You die, you perish in your sin. If you will not believe that I am he, says Jesus. So I bid you this afternoon, Montrose, once again, hear the voice, hear the call of Jesus, hear the call of the Savior. Repent ye and believe the gospel. It's not my voice, it's the voice of Jesus. It's the voice of Christ. It's the voice of the one who loved sinners and gave himself for them. He came for this reason. Christ Jesus came into the world 
to save sinners, not to make you wealthy, healthy, prosperous. He came to save sinners, which you all are. He came to suffer, bleed, and die, shed his blood on that cross for sinners to take away your sin, take away your guilt, take away your shame, your blame, take the curse and the wrath of God from off of you and set you free and give you life eternal, everlasting, so that in that day, when you breathe your last and close your eyes in death and open them on the other side as you must, instead of an angry judge, you're faced with a Savior with open arms waiting to receive you into his kingdom forever and ever. But if you will not come to him, if you will not come to him, and you may, you may, on the authority of his word, come unto me, he says, and I will give you rest, peace with God, and the peace of God. Come unto me, he says, but if you will not come, in that day I tell you, when you open your eyes the other side of death, you will indeed be faced with the judge of all the earth, and he will cast you into hell forever. The resistless voice of God, I tell you, whatever God speaks, whatever God speaks, God's voice is heard in all the earth, and God's voice accomplishes everything, everything that he speaks. Yours doesn't. Mine doesn't. God says, let there be light, and there's light. He says, let there be a world, and there's a world. He says, let there be mankind, and there's mankind. He says, let there be a cross where my son can be crucified, and my people can be saved, and there's a cross. 6,000 years later, there's a cross on a hill called Calvary. Why? Because God spoke it into being so that his people, not everybody, not everybody, his people, his chosen people, so that they would hear the message of the cross, Jesus Christ and him crucified, hear, hear the old, old story of Jesus and his love, a Savior who loved sinners, ruined, lost, vile, blaspheming, unclean, fornicating, sodomizing, hearing his voice, gently calling them apart, come to me, come to me, come to me, be washed and made clean. And when they hear his Oh, powerful, when they hear his mighty, almighty voice, they come to him and he washes them, he cleanses them, he sanctifies them, and he makes them children of God. By his grace, by his grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, None other name, neither is there salvation in any other name. Not in Islam, not in Mecca's religion, not in Rome's religion, or any of the others in between. Neither is there salvation in any other name, none other name under heaven, whereby you must be saved, Montrose. His name is Jesus, J-E-S-U-S. -S. Jesus is his name. Salvation in that name. Powerful salvation. Life eternal. Jesus bids you today come to him for life 
come to him for salvation, pardon, forgiveness, all the blessings of God, peace that passes all understanding, joy unspeakable and full of glory, all the blessings that God has for mankind come to you in Jesus, but only in Jesus. I don't doubt that there are many people in Montrose today who would like to have peace, who would like to have the joy, who would like to have the forgiveness, but they don't want Jesus. Well, you can't have without Jesus. You can't have the benefits without the benefactor. Jesus is the benefactor. You come to him and you get the benefits, but you get nothing from God but through Jesus Christ. All the promises of God are yea and amen in Jesus Christ and the Son of God. Saving power in that voice. God has spoken in holiness. Psalmist, he goes on to say, give us help from trouble, for vain is the help of man. You look to man, you look to the state, you look to the government, the government of Scotland, Westminster, what help is there there? Oh, they'll give you money, they'll give you benefits, They'll give you all kinds of things, but they can't deliver you. They can't give you refuge. They can't, give you, they can't get you out of your trouble. Surely as the sparks fly upwards, man's born to trouble, the Bible says. Whenever you find man, you find trouble. Why? Because man's a fallen creature. Sin is the source of the trouble. You get rid of the sin, you get rid of the trouble. But vain, vain, I tell you, is the help of man. Man's philosophies, Darwin's and Dawkins, fools and blind, just like all the rest. Vain is the help of man. Empty, vanity, vanity, all is vanity in turning to man. No help there. In that day when you stand before God as you must, in judgment, what help will your fellow man be to you then? What help will the SNP be to you then? What help will the Westminster government be to you then? What help will the United Nations be to you then? Vain is the help of man. Cease from man. Turn from man. And turn to the man Christ Jesus. The only one who can really help you, truly help you, deliver you from your sin, from your guilt, your shame, your blame, deliver you from the wrath of God. He died on the cross to do so. He's done the hard bit, Montrose. He's done the living, the loving. He's done what you can't do. He's done the suffering. He's done the dying. He's done the rising from the dead. He's ascended. He's the King of glory. He's the risen Christ. With all authority in heaven and earth given, given unto him. And with the authority to save you this afternoon. And hearing the gospel, hearing my gospel this afternoon, you have a warrant to believe. Don't go away from this, please, thinking, I'm too bad, I'm too awful, I'm too wicked, I can't be saved. God won't forgive me. Yes, yes. I tell you, the worst of you in Montrose, the worst of you, the most evil of you, in hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ this afternoon, you have the warrant to believe, to take Jesus Christ as your savior but you reject you reject you've got nothing left but the fearful looking for of judgment he came to his own but his own did not receive him but to them who did receive him to those who believed on his name he gave them the right 
the power, the authority to become children of God. Reach out the hand of faith and receive the gift of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Reach out the hand of faith in humility. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and receive the gift of God, the Son of God, Jesus, your own and personal Savior who promises, promises God, His name, the Son of God, His name is on this. He promises eternal life to all who will truly believe. And that moment a sinner truly believes, that moment from God, a pardon they receive. So I call upon you, Montrose, today. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as many, many have done in the past, and many, many do today. Harden not your hearts, but today, hear his voice, hear his call. Many are called, but few are chosen, because few believe, few receive. Today, repent ye and believe the gospel, Montrose. Repent ye, repent ye, repent ye. Repent ye, repent ye and believe the gospel for the kingdom of God is at hand. And that's the only way you can enter God's kingdom. You would like to have a copy of God's word. Check these things out for yourself. See that they are so in accordance with God's word. It's offered to you freely. No cost or obligation to you, yours, simply for the taking. If you've got a question, feel free to ask it. And if you would like somebody to pray for you, I would be only too happy to do that also. Take God's Word home with you. Take the Son of God home with you. Where you are now. Right now, this moment, repent in the depths of your being, your heart. Repent ye and believe the gospel, Montrose. May God have mercy, mercy I see upon your precious, precious, never dying souls.